Anger. When I tell you the word anger, what other words come up? Fear, anxiety, loudness, yelling, disconnection. What words come up? Many people are afraid of their anger. How will I act when I get angry? I don't recognize myself, people may say. I don't recognize how what I say. I don't recognize how I act. And later on, the person feels so bad, they feel so guilty that they want to apologize, that they regret their behavior. They regret what they said. However, one of my favorite quotes that will help us plan for our anger, plan our reaction when we get angry is, failing to plan is planning to fail. <clears throat> it's an amazing quote. It really shows that we need to be prepared for our best reactions. Nobody's born great. We have this maybe assumption. People are born great. People are born with certain personalities. That's true. They're born with certain personalities. However, <clears throat> everybody gets angry. <coughs> and I want to share with you an amazing story about Hillel and how he had a situation that really tried his patience. And he's a very great person. He was a very great person. I'm going to share with you seven tools on how to get prepared for when you next get getting angry because everybody gets angry, even great people. And also I'm going to give you a practical tool, a practical prayer at the end. So let's read the story about Hillel and learn how we should be prepared to react the best way we can when we next get angry. Okay. In the Talmud, Shabbat 31a, it is written the following story. <clears throat> Two men made a wager with each other. Whoever can make Hillel angry, they said, will get 40, 400 zoos. <coughs> that day, it was Erev Shabbat, and Hillel was washing his hair. One of the men passed by the entrance to Hillel's house. He yelled out, who here is called Hillel? Who here is called Hillel? Hillel wrapped himself in his cloak and went out to him. My son, the sage said, what is it that you want? <clears throat> I have a question to ask, the man began. Ask, my son, ask. Hillel responded, why is it that the heads of the Babylonians are round? You have asked a very important question, Hillel answered, because they do not have alert midwives. The man waited a short while until Hillel had gone back to his bath. Then he yelled out again, who here is called Hillel? Who here is called Hillel? Hillel wrapped himself in his cloak and went out to him. He said to him, My son, he said, What is it you wish? I have a question to ask, the man said again. And again Hillel encouraged him, Ask, my son, ask. Why are the eyes of the Talmudians weak? And again Hillel answered, You have asked a very important question, because they live among sand dunes. The man went away, waited a short while, returned, and yelled out a third time, Who here is called Hillel? Hillel wrapped himself in his cloak and went out to him. He asked, My son, what is it you wish? Once again the man repeated, I have a question to ask. Ask, my son, ask, came the patient response. <coughs> Why are the feet of the Africans broad? My son, you have asked a very important question. Because they live among the swamps. Frustrated, the man made one final attempt. I have many questions to ask, but I'm afraid that you might become angry. Hillel calmly sat down before him. Ask all the questions that you would ask, the sage often. <coughs> In desperation, the man asked, Are you Hillel, who is called leader of the Jewish people? <clears throat> yes, if you, if you are he, then may there be no more like you in Israel. Why, my son, why? Because I have lost 400 zoos through you. Control yourself, said Hillel, concluding the exchange. He said, it is better that you, lo that you lose twice 400 zoos through Hillel than that Hillel become angry. <coughs> and this is our amazing story that is so, so paramount for us to learn from and prepare ourselves 
for our next reaction when we get tested, when we get tried, when we get angry. <clears throat> so the first tool I'm going to share with you is be prepared for stressful situations. Be prepared. Imagine the next stressful situation that's going to come up and you have to imagine your reaction. <clears throat> Whether it's a tight schedule uh, over a lot of things happening at once. It's a stressful situation. Be prepared. Be prepared for stressful situations. Everyone is stressed in different ways. You have to prepare yourself for your next stressful situation and imagine your reaction <clears throat> in detail. The more detail, the better. <coughs> Number two. We have to remember that when you are criticized, it atones for your sins. We all sin sometimes really unintentionally, sometimes really unconsciously. And <clears throat> when we're criticized, insulted, and put down, it atones for our many great sins as long as we don't react in anger. And here we see Hillel was calm and patient and re responding to the man and his questions really in a calm way. <clears throat> okay, number three. <clears throat> Be prepared for time constraints. Be prepared for a limited amount of time. We know that we're tested and we're tried when we have a small amount of time or when we're interrupted with so much to do or change of schedule. And we could be tr tested and tried in that way as well. <coughs> okay, number, number four. Address the the people you're speaking to always in kindness. My Rebison said she took upon herself this trait of only talking when she's in a good mood, when she feels like she can respond with a kind attitude. Sometimes she's not in a good mood and just she's a regular person. She gets phone calls and she doesn't answer the phone because she's not in the mood. She she doesn't think she's going to respond kindly. So it's very important for us to respond kindly, just like Hillel did. <coughs> Excuse me. Just like Hillel did to this man, saying, my son, yes, my son, my son. So it's, it's really important for us to address each other kindly and respectfully, not because we necessarily feel close to the person, but because we want to respond kindly. And when we say, my daughter, my son, my dear, sweetie, already it softens your comment even more. Okay, that was number number four. Number five. Right, I have six, sorry. Number five. When we are angered, when we have a different agenda. So Hillel's agenda was to take a shower. He was bathing. Shabbat, he was so stressed. He must have been so stressed. So Shabbat's coming in. This man constantly asking him silly questions. So... The other man's agenda was obviously to ask silly questions in order to make Hillel angry so he could win money, win the bet over 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 the whole deal. Hillel's agenda was to keep Shabbat, you know, honor Shabbat, welcome Shabbat, being all bathed and ready. He had a different agenda. So when you have a understand the person's agenda, you'll be able to see that. Listen, right now I have to take care of this. If Hashem made this happen, which could be another tool. If Hashem decided to send this man my way to, to annoy me, then this is what's best for me. This is what I need to take care of right now, even though I have a different agenda. Right? <clears throat> How many times do we rush our children because we have a different agenda to be at a certain place at a certain time? Or we are admitting guests and we have to get the house ready at a certain time. <clears throat> or whatever that it may be. So keep your agenda flexible and know that Hashem is in charge. Okay. And number six. So number six is be prepared for inconveniences. It was so inconvenient that at this time, this man had to ask him these silly questions. It was inconvenient. It shouldn't have happened. It's not the right time. Doesn't the man see that Hillel is, you know, trying to wrap himself on the rope, come out and, 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 greet, and greet him again, warmly asking him silly questions? It's inconvenient. But we must remember that the harder something is, the more effort that we put into something, the more reward we receive. 
And it's very important for us to remember that because <clears throat> people's character is seen as strong, strength of character is strong when they're tested. You know, we admire people who have strength of character. When we're wondering, how are they so calm? How do they do it? How do they pull off being so calm and composed and happy with such a busy schedule and, of course, challenges and a stressful stressful schedule? Stress is good. When you have stress, it's good. It pulls you to different ways. But when you can't handle it, that's when you're letting the stress take over you. So stress in our lives, you know, it's good to a certain point. However, we must know how to control it, not let it to control us. And I want to leave you with a beautiful prayer that I really, really recommend you say every single day. And in this way, you'll program yourself to welcome the next challenge. You don't ask for challenges, but when they come, next situation that's going to probably trigger you to become angry you'll be able to say this prayer okay the prayer says <clears throat> thank you Hashem for sending me this opportunity to work on developing my character I know that you have created this situation specifically for me because it is precisely what I need right now for my spiritual growth <clears throat> please help me to grow from it and indeed become the person I can become through this trial <clears throat> now this is so so important for us to know that we can overcome any challenge and yes there's going to be times when we fail there's going to be times when we actually get angry but the most important thing is not to be afraid of your anger to learn from your anger see the trends see who triggers it what triggers it when you're triggered and to learn from it and to become better remember you're not here to be perfect you're here to be better better and better better today than you were yesterday better this week than you were last week, and that's really the goal. So I hope these tips were helpful. This prayer I received from <clears throat> uh, a character book, which I don't have the source right now, but it's not my own prayer, but you can welcome to use it, write it down, and repeat it to yourself on a daily basis, especially when you think about uh, a situation when you're going to experience, which is challenging, Right before you are angry or you get angry, you feel the anger, you say this to yourself, it's going to be automatic. Remember, habits become your nature. When you welcome new habits, in the beginning it feels uncomfortable, it feels like it's weird. How can I say this? I don't even talk like this. That's fine. Habits become part of your nature. And I hope we'll be able to really internalize these ideas and these thoughts um, uh, with gratitude to Rabbi Mordechai Kraft for his insights as well and hopefully we'll be able to control our emotions, be prepared for our anger. Leah Abramov, Being and Becoming, Awakening Awareness of Your Greatness and Potential. <laughs>